You're going to be hearing a lot about the central dogma of genetics in this class and this unit and the next, and that is that DNA makes RNA, and that RNA is used to make protein. And so we have DNA in the form of a chromosome, and all along that DNA are segments called genes. But when we're thinking about the central dogma and the proteins produced by these genes, these p bits of DNA, how is that gene expression controlled? What determines if a gene is expressed and made into RNA and a protein or not? Well, the way prokaryotes handle that is using something called an operon. And so this is only in bacteria, and we're looking at many genes. So one operon is in charge of many genes at a time. They act as like on-off switches to turn on all of those genes or turn all the genes off at the same time, and they can be inducible, which means that the presence of something turns them on and the absence of it means that the operon is off, the genes are off, or they can be repressible, which means that when something is present, it's turned off, it's repressed, and when that thing is absent, it's turned on. And so when we're looking at operons in general, basic operon structure is this. When you're looking at your DNA, your length of DNA, there's going to be an operator. That's where the name operon comes from. And downstream of that operator, there's two or more genes. And upstream of the operator, you know, so these genes code for mRNA. They're all related in some way because you want to turn them on or off at the same time. And here we go. Upstream of that DNA is the promoter. And so the promoter, remember, is where the RNA polymerase is integrated in. And so the operator sits between the RNA polymerase, where the RNA polymerase would start, and where the genes actually are. So there's actually a molecule that sits on that operator region that binds to it and blocks transcription. So you would get no transcription that way. So now let's look at one of the two classic operon examples. The trip operon or tryptophan operon um, has a lot to do with feedback inhibition. So if you remember feedback inhibition, that's where we had this series of enzymes that produced a series of products, and the final product went back and shut off the first enzyme. Repressible operons remind me of those feedback inhibition or feedback loops. And so if you're looking at your stretch of DNA, uh, the tryptophan operon actually has five genes related to enzymes that the bacteria uses to make the tryptophan amino acid. And so the repressor is not bound to the operator. If you add tryptophan, so if the enzymes are making lots and lots of tryptophan, tryptophan binds to the repressor molecule, and then that binds to the operator blocking those genes from being produced because you have plenty of tryptophan in the cell already. So tryptophan production blocks transcription of tryptophan making this a repressible operon. The LAC operon is the classic example of an inducible operon and so on this you have three genes in this case used to digest lactose and an oper operator with a repressor protein that's bound and that promoter that would promote the expression of these three genes so the RNA polymerase would bind there. Interestingly with the LAC operon you've also got a promoter and the gene for making the repressor like right in the same area on the little circular chromosome of the bacteria and so we have this kind of regulatory gene there making the repressor protein as well. And so in this case, if lactose is present around the cell and suddenly the cell has lots of lactose that it could digest, lactose binds to that repressor, removes the repressor molecule because it does not bind in that state, and now the genes to digest lactose can be produced and the cell itself can digest lactose making this an inducible operon. So what do I want you to take away? I want you to realize that this is in prokaryotes and they're using many genes at one time. So they're grouped, all the genes of a related 
um, need or purpose are grouped together under one operon's control. You can induce these operons, meaning you allow transcription, or you can repress them and block transcription. You've got lots of DNA space here and in our eukaryotic genomes as well, dedicated to regulation of the genes, not just making mRNA. So we have a lot of genes, but we also have a lot of other stretches of DNA being used to control when those genes are turned on or turned off. And some genes produce proteins to regulate other genes. And so that's what you saw with the LAC operon. Upstream of the LAC operon, you had the promoter region and the mRNA, the gene to make the mRNA, to make the repressor molecule, all kind of there in the same area. And so we have regulatory genes, and we have you know, genes that are expressed to make proteins to do a variety of tasks in the cell.